Welcome back to A320 Knowledge, your trusted source for Airbus expertise. Today, we're diving into part two of our masterclass on low visibility operations. In today's tutorial, we'll explore the following. The critical role of ILS systems in low visibility landings and how they ensure precise guidance. How the ILS localizer and glide slope work to help pilots maintain course and how false signals can impact autoland operations. Essential runway and taxiway lighting systems designed to enhance visibility and safety during low visibility conditions. The Instrument Landing System, or ILS, offers precise guidance to aircraft during approach and landing. This ground-based system relies on radio signals to provide both lateral and vertical navigation. In low visibility situations, such as fog, rain, or snow, high-intensity lighting systems improve safety and visibility. A localizer is composed of an antenna array, usually positioned beyond the far end of the runway, consisting of multiple pairs of directional antennas. It transmits two signals on one of 40 ILS channels, one modulated at 90 Hz and the other at 150 Hz. These signals are emitted from closely situated antennas, each producing a narrow beam. One beam is aimed slightly to the left of the runway centerline, while the other points slightly to the right. The aircraft's localizer receiver determines its position by comparing the depth of modulation between the 90 Hz and 150 Hz signals, each with a modulation depth of 20%. The difference between the signals changes depending on the aircraft's distance from the centerline. A standard ILS localizer typically provides coverage up to 25 nautical miles within 10 degrees of the centerline. Beyond this, the range gradually reduces. For example, at 35 degrees off the centerline, the range is approximately 17 nautical miles. While these specifications apply to standard ILS systems, extended range systems, mainly used in the United States and Canada, offer greater coverage. The glide slope, similar to the localizer, uses two intersecting radiation patterns modulated at 90 Hz and 150 Hz. However, unlike the localizer, these signals are arranged vertically and transmitted along the aircraft's approach path. The glide path angle typically ranges from 2 to 4.5 degrees down to the runway, with 3 degrees being the most common setting, depending on any obstacles in the approach area. Occasionally, false signals can occur above the intended slope. For instance, a false glide path at 9 degrees can appear similar to the real glide slope. No false signals are present below the intended slope, but two additional false glide paths often appear, one at a 9 degree descent and another at 15 degrees. Following these false paths results in an excessively steep descent, which is unsafe. These false paths may not trigger visible warning indicators, and autopilot systems could mistakenly track them down to the ground. To identify a false glide slope, pilots can observe the unusually high descent rate it produces. Verifying airspeed and altitude against the approach plate is critical for confirming alignment with the correct glide slope. The ILS critical area is a designated zone surrounding the localizer and glide path antennas where vehicles, including aircraft, are prohibited during ILS operations. This restriction exists to prevent unacceptable disruptions to the ILS signal caused by objects within this area. Beyond the critical area lies the ILS sensitive area, which extends further and imposes controls on the parking and movement of vehicles and aircraft. This additional protection ensures that large moving objects outside the critical area, but still within the airfield boundary, do not interfere with the ILS signal during operations. An aircraft is deemed clear of the ILS critical area once it crosses the point where the taxiway centerline lights transition from alternating yellow and green to solid green. The operation of the ILS and its designated category relies on safeguarding the signal from interference, especially from reflections caused by objects illuminated by the localizer or glide path beams. 
moving objects, particularly large ones such as taxiing aircraft, can disrupt ILS signals. To mitigate this, ATC may increase separation between aircraft, especially during low visibility conditions. These precautions are implemented at ATC's discretion or upon pilot request, even when weather conditions do not strictly require low visibility procedures. The presence of a vehicle or aircraft within the ILS sensitive area can greatly disrupt the stability of the signals, potentially distorting the glide slope and localizer beams which may cause the aircraft to deviate from its intended course. The dimensions and boundaries of the ILS sensitive area differ between airports, influenced by the ILS category and the placement and size of the antennas. A pilot's ability to distinguish the runway from its surroundings depends heavily on the contrast between the two. Airborne particles, such as water droplets, scatter and diffuse light, increasing the brightness of the background and reducing the contrast between the runway and its environment. This effect explains why visibility decreases during hazy or foggy conditions when landing into the sun or using landing lights in snow or fog. Reduced contrast makes it harder to identify features like snow-covered runways or those in brightly lit urban areas. Enhancing contrast is essential to maintain the visibility required for safe operations in low visibility conditions. A standard approach lighting system, commonly found at regional airports, is often modeled on the Calvert 3-bar high-intensity approach lighting design. The two most widely used systems are the Calvert 3-bar system and the U.S. approach light system with sequenced flashing lights, which can also function as a simplified short approach. During landing, the runway centerline lights change color as the aircraft gets closer. In the final 900 meters, the lights shift from white to alternating red and white at 600 meters and to solid red in the last 300 meters. Runway edge lights, which mark the lateral boundaries, are white, but the final 600 meters are highlighted with amber lights. For ILS CAT2 and CAT3 operations, runway lights are set to high brightness and referred to as high-intensity runway lights. Flight crews must remain vigilant for potential ILS interference when conducting autoland operations without low visibility procedures in effect. They should closely monitor the aircraft's flight path and be prepared to disconnect the autopilot if significant disturbances occur near the ground. Taxiway edge lights, which are light blue, are used during nighttime or when visibility is reduced. Similarly, taxiway centerline lights are light green and serve the same function. Important areas, such as ILS sensitive zones, are marked by informational signs located throughout the aerodrome. Signs indicating low visibility operations are visible on the right side of the diagram. Dashed yellow lines, paired with either a single or double solid yellow line, indicate the holding point for a CAT-1 runway. In contrast, a ladder style marking designates an ILS CAT-2 or CAT-3 sensitive area, which becomes the active holding point when low visibility procedures are implemented. The taxiway identification is provided by black signs with yellow letters for the current taxiway and yellow signs with black letters for the next taxiway. Stop bars which consist of Baroque red lights positioned across the taxiway, are controlled by the tower and primarily used in low visibility situations. These lights signal that crossing is prohibited when illuminated, and any instructions to cross must be verified with air traffic control. Our popular A320 tech quizzes are now part of an exclusive newsletter membership designed to provide you with even more value. As a member, you'll receive four brand new A320 tech quizzes every month, one each Monday, delivered straight to your inbox. You'll also receive exclusive deep dives into A320 systems, procedures, and techniques that go beyond this YouTube content. And you'll also gain access to bonus content and other surprises to keep your knowledge fresh and up to date. If you're interested, click the link in the description or scan the QR code on screen to sign up today. Thanks for tuning in, and let's take your A320 knowledge to the next level.